Labels can be a really useful thing. Take the ones on these plants, for example. They tell you how much sun the plant needs, how much water, and how big it's going to grow. Other labels, like sustainable and eco, they can leave you warm and fuzzy, but what do they actually mean in a practical gardening sense? Now, we all want to live more sustainably, but where do you actually get started? Now, so many of us have been dealing with so much rain and it's pouring today, but you don't have to have a long memory to think back to times of drought and water restrictions. But now is the time to put in an irrigation system and prepare for that. Now, you can use a standalone or a tap timer, that's fine, but why not harness the power of the internet and Wi-Fi with a smart controller. Now, these will monitor the weather conditions online and only water when it's necessary. Another great way to conserve water is to install one of these. Why not take advantage of all the rain falling? And then you'll have plenty of water to water your veggie patch when the drought sets back in. Now, this veggie patch is looking a little bit sad. So, before I get on to planting, I'm going to start clearing out. To help feed our veggie patch, I'm going to be putting in a compost bin behind us. Now, these weeds are fine to go in there, but anything that has seeds on it, like this bindi, you want to keep out of the compost. So the plant will die down, but the seeds will survive because it's not going to get hot enough in a tumbling compost bin. And then when you put that back in the garden, you're just going to reinfect it with weeds. One of the best things you can do for the environment is to start a compost bin. It lessens your kitchen waste, it lessens your carbon footprint, and you create fantastic compost for your garden. Now, tumblers are a great way to do it because they speed up the process. You simply put your waste in, give it a turn, and then your compost is made. Now, just like a compost heap, you want a combination of green stuff, which is stuff like your kitchen waste and old weeds. You want about 50% of that and 50% brown stuff, which is twigs and things like dried leaves like this. Now, often you don't create enough brown compared to the amount of green you make out of the kitchen, so you can add in some sugar cane mulch like this. Now, there's a couple of things you shouldn't put in your compost bin, mainly bread and meat, because that's going to attract vermin, so keep them out. Now, our compost in the tumbler is going to take about three months before we can use it. So before that's ready, I want to get onto this area, and I need to lift the soil up because it's compacted over time. So I'm just using some bagged garden soil mix, which I'll add some more bagged compost to. But before I get to that, I'm just going to lift these plants out. We've got some chives and some rosemary, and I should be able to get enough of a root ball so they transplant nicely. Now we've got our soil levels up, it's time to add in some compost. Now, I'm using mushroom compost, and it's incredibly organic and dense, so it holds on to lots of moisture. It's got lots of nitrogen in it, too, so it's perfect for leafy greens and veggie patches. But you do want to mix it through your soil really well, because it's got quite a high salt content. In an area like this, I'm going to use four bags of mushroom compost and just dig it through really well before I start planting. Growing your own produce at home is obviously a great way to lessen your carbon footprint, but you're never really going to be able to grow enough to support yourself, so you need to be selective with what you grow. Now, I find if I buy lettuce or leafy greens from the supermarket, by the time I come around to using the remainders of them, they've all gone smushy and there's a lot of waste. So a great way to minimize that is to grow your own. You just come and pick what you need, and the rest stays fresh out in the garden. Herbs really like being in pots because they're really free draining and you can move them around into the sunny spots of the garden to really maximize the flavor. As well as the edible plants, I'm also going to be planting some flowering plants and I'm going for two different types, companion plants and pollinating plants. For the companion plants, I'm just using these marigolds. So these are going to sit near our veggie patch and they'll attract all the insects you don't want on your veggies, things like aphids. When they get covered, you can just replace them. Now, I'm also planting over here lots of plants that are great for pollinators, things like this achillea. Now, when you're planning for pollinators, you want an array of different colors, different shapes, different heights, so the pollinators go around, have lots of lovely food.
At the end of every good story, there's a happy ending. And in the garden, that's always with mulch. Now, I've gone for two types. Around the garden beds, I've gone for a eucalyptus mulch. It's coarser, and it's going to break down slower than the sugarcane mulch that I'm using in the veggie patch. So if you just try a few of these eco tips, you'll lessen your footprint and have a more sustainable garden.